We are in the, the suburbs, we're in Netherley on the south side of Glasgow. Uh, I suppose we're in the grounds of Lynn Park. There's a wheelie bin behind us, well the remains of a burned out wheelie bin and an empty bottle of MD2020 and there's carrier bags hanging off trees. This is just a, a place where much of my youth was spent. We were younger, we were the wee kids. Um, you'd always be nervous that you'd see the, the people down with their MD2020 setting wheelie bins on fire. So it, it was a, it's brought back some strange memories. People used to jump into the brown water and all that and most of them came out alive, I think. Yeah, it is, it is a very close to one of the settings in the book. I think every time I sat down to try and write something, this story was at the forefront. It started as a short story and I'd always thought about expanding it and I just couldn't really get rid of it without writing it through to its, to, to its conclusion. Um, which in the end has been quite inconclusive. I must have been about 13 or 14, I think, when I really had my ears opened up um, and started choosing my own music that I liked. Actually, that was the year I got my first bass guitar and started my lessons and really started on my, my musical journey, I suppose. Try to write when you're doing the touring life because life is so fragmented. I mean, there should be time, and there is time, and I have done it um, occasionally. But because you're always waiting to get to the next place, it's one of these hurry up and wait scenarios, I suppose, as everyone says. Um, so I don't find it that easy. Um, although, saying that now I'm a, a new father, it seems a whole lot easier than my, my writing schedule at the minute, which is 45 minutes uh, before the wee one wakes up in the morning. Everyone was gone, except for a wee kid on crutches waiting for a taxi. Nicky crossed the road to the phone box, called home and left a message. He hung up, then unscrunched the piece of paper from his pocket. No one answered the doorbell. Up at Sidspit, the houses were huge and white and someone had once bought a pair that backed onto each other, torn one down and replaced it with a tennis court. He waited, then pressed the button again. When no one answered, he tried the door handle. It clicked open, leaking out a faint buzz of guitar. He kept hold of the handle, staring at the set of keys hanging from the other side. There was a thick cream carpet between him and the stairs. He went to undo his laces, then stopped, wiped his feet and walked across. The banister creaked under his hand. It was carved wide and smooth and dotted with brass studs to prevent you sliding down in your arse. At the top, he chose the door covered in yellow police incident do not cross tape. He nudged it open. Why don't you just wear the fucking specs, Sid shouted. The bass player stood close, squinting and trying to copy his fingers. Sid let go of the guitar. Get a strap that holds them on your head. I don't need the fucking specs. You're always a beat behind man and plus it's only four notes. Just fucking memorise it. Piss off, man, the other boy said. He flicked the hair out of his face and noticed Nicky standing there. Is that the guy? Sheep and Goats, it's about Nicky, a teenage drummer. Um, he's a church-going boy who finds himself on the drum stool of the school's worst punk band. Uh, and he meets Sid, who's the leader of the punk band, and it's about their relationship that forms and Nicky's struggles between his old church-going life and this new life and all the new friends he makes and his um, his new adventures around about the, the suburbs where he lives and how his past relationships start to suffer and the new relationships start to lead him places he maybe is not quite comfortable but isn't quite ready to turn his back on. Writing Sheep and Goats, one of the, the things I was thinking about, I suppose, was being a teenage boy, going through adolescence, all these changes, all these 
bizarre feelings. But yet, if you're part of that church-going um, life, if Christianity is some kind of influence on you, you're also thinking about the eternal fate of, of your soul. You've got this vast, massive question on your shoulders, but at the same time, you just don't know what's going on with your body and it's leading you in all sorts of um, unexpected directions. <laughs>